All right, let's actually do an example calculation of this. This question says the following. If pure gold has a melting point of 1,064 degrees Celsius, but it can be supercooled 230 degrees below its melting point, calculate delta G star. Again, that's our activation energy for homogeneous nucleation, assuming that you've got homogeneous nucleation occurring. And then it says values for your latent heat of fusion. That's the heat of the transition as you go from liquid to solid, right? And the surface free energy are negative 1.16 e to the 9 joules per meter cubed and 0 0.132 joules per meter squared, respectively. We're asked to give the answer in electron volts with one decimal place, remembering the conversion factor between electron volts and joules. All right, now we know the expressions are these. We just derived them. So all we have to do is plug things in here. Okay, let's start with delta G star. Delta G star is equal to 16 pi times R surface energy cubed. So that's 0 0.132 joules per meter squared. We need to cube that term. We're going to multiply that by the temperature where you expect this to happen. Let's put that in Kelvin. 1064 degrees plus 273 puts it into Kelvin. This term needs to be squared. We're now going to divide that by 3 times the enthalpy of fusion, right? So that is negative 1.16 e to the 9 joules per meter cubed. That whole thing is squared. And we're going to multiply this by 1 over the temperature of your transition minus the temperature where it's actually happening at squared. So that's going to be 230 degrees squared, our supercooling value squared. Now remember, because Kelvin and Celsius are on the same scale, right? They're just shifted from one another, and we're talking about a difference in temperatures. 200, a delta T of 230 Celsius is equal to a delta T of 230 Kelvin. Let's do a quick unit analysis here. What's going to come out of this? Well, our Kelvins are going to cancel. Joules per meter squared is going to be divided by, and that's cubed, is going to be divided by joules per meter cubed squared. So that's going to be joules cubed over meters to the sixth is going to be divided by joules squared over meters to the sixth. So our meters squared is going to cancel and we're just going to be left with joules, right? So if we plug things in, you're just going to get a value in joules. When I plug it into my calculator, I get the following. I get 9.64 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. 9.64 e to the negative 19 joules. We can go ahead and convert that to electron volts using this conversion factor right there, and I find that it's equal to about 6 electron volts. That's a pretty big activation energy, right? 6 electron volts. Um, that's a pretty big activation energy, which is, and that's when you're at 230 degrees below the melting point. So it's actually fairly common for some of these metals and materials to supercool way below what the phase diagram suggests. The phase diagram suggested that it would ha happen exactly at 1064, but in reality, you don't see solidification from homogeneous nucleation until quite a bit below that, right? Now the next question says this. Go ahead and calculate the critical nuclei size in nanometers with one decimal place. So under these exact same conditions, how big is that size of particle that will continue growing versus shrinking? What's the cutoff size? Well, we can do that. We're just going to plug things in here. And it's the same as before, the same approach, negative 2 times our surface area, right? Multiplied by the temperature at which this expe is expected to take place. Divide that by the enthalpy of fusion. Right? And then multiply this by 1 over the amount of supercooling. Doing a quick unit analysis, what do we find? We're going to have joules per meter squared times temperature. This is going to be divided by temperature. This is going to be divided by joules per meter cubed. So if we plug everything in, we're going to get a number in meters. Right, So we're going to have to uh, multiply that by 1 times 10 to the ninth to put it into nanometers. When I plug this in, I get the value as 1.32 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. R squared, or R star is equal to 1.32 times 10 to the negative ninth meters, or that's 1.3 nanometers, 1.32 nanometers. All right, so that's how you go about doing these sorts of calculations for uh, the activation energy for homogeneous nucleation and the critical size for homogeneous nucleation in metals.